Hey guys, what's up? Mustiaki here, creator of iPodaboy. Welcome to another episode of How to Bam's Mailbag. Now, Mailbag is the new weekly show where you can send in all the questions that you have about making manga and I will be answering them on this show. Now, if you have any questions, you can send them at any moment to this address, info at howtobam.com. Now, let's start with the Mailbag show. Oi, 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 is that the mail? Let's start off with the first question. Choli Wish writes, I get lazy a lot of times on drawing on my manga. It is really frustrating to see that I still have not finished a chapter of my manga. I watch so many speed paints, a really good artist that give me motivation, but that only lasts for about an hour and then I'm off on doubting myself. How can I motivate myself to finish a chapter and not give up? Also, thank you for all those great responses on the questions your viewers sent. Really helped me rethink on some things for my manga. Choli Wish, thank you for your question. There's a difference between being lazy and not having motivation. Sometimes they can feel the same, but it's not. Being lazy is when you know what you have to do, but you keep on stalling it. For example, uh, you look at a page and you know what you have to do. You have to do a lot of backgrounds or, or really complex and detailed scenes. And you just say, I'll just do it tomorrow. Now, if that's the case, then that's being lazy. You should kick yourself every time when you have the thought coming in your head. In some cases, I had some pages when I needed, uh, well, detailed backgrounds to draw. But there are some times that I don't feel like doing them. But what I do is I go to the next page or the next page after that and finish something else. But these are really exceptional cases. It's amazing how much you grow by just disciplining yourself and stick to the pages you want to finish in the first place. Just find ways to make it more fun. I know that many artists struggle with doing backgrounds. I did one time too, but it's like a therapist session for me now. Clear your mind, you know? So discipline is the cure for laziness. When you have no motivation, it can be more complex. It's more like feeling you are burned out of ideas, the lack of inspiration. But in most times, it has something to do with doubting yourself. And that's not strange because everyone doubts him or herself in a while. Are you doing the right thing? Is it really what you wanna do? Are you making the right choices? Am I good enough, right? These are very normal thoughts. However, listen up. Because this, what I'm about to ask you, is very important. What is the difference between being a professional and an amateur? Do you think professionals have no doubts? Of course they do. Like I said, everyone has doubts, but the thing what makes you professional is, what are you going to do about it? Doubt can look like a negative thing, right? It looks and feels like you don't know what you are doing. And that's exactly what it is. There is something in your brain giving you a signal, like tapping you on the shoulder and saying, hey, hey buddy, Hold on one second. Are you sure about this? But it's not a negative thing. It can be if you keep feeling that way and don't do anything active about it. That signal is telling you that you have to prepare for something. It could be that your artwork isn't good enough. So what do you do? You start looking at other drawings, speed drawings, and then you see amazing stuff. And then you see how far away your skills are and your doubt becomes a confirmation for yourself. Telling you, I can never draw like that. And before you know it, you stop drawing for days, weeks, months, or even years until you start missing drawing again and the whole thing starts over and over again. So what is the difference between a pro and an amateur? What I just described is an amateur. Now what would a professional do when the same signal comes tapping on his shoulder? Well, the first thing you should do is not letting that feeling take over. You have to step outside of yourself for a second and understand that that feeling of doubt is just a signal that is helping you pointing out something. It could be that you are doing the right thing, but you have to double check it. But let's say this signal is pointing you to say that your artwork isn't good. It could be a minor thing, like not having the anatomy correct. Or it could be that you have to start from scratch. Whatever the case is, not let the feeling of failure overwhelm you. Well, the second thing you have to do is look at it and understand what it is that's out of place. By understanding it, you can move to the third thing and that's knowing what you have to do to fix it. If none of those things work, 
and I'm also having those moments from time to time, then you do not want to force your creativity because creativity works best when it flows naturally. Sometimes you are just pushing yourself too hard. Well, then it's just better to give it a short rest. So thank you for your question. And on to the next question. And the next question is from Mani Kaizu who writes, do you think an American can become a mangaka in Japan? Uh, well, in matter of fact, there's an American who did it already. He goes by the name of Felipe Smith. He has done the manga uh, MBQ uh, for Tokyo Pop at that time. And after that, he got a shot in, uh, I believe it was uh, Kodansha's uh, Morning Magazine in Japan. It's one of the top sign-in manga magazines in Japan with the title Pipochu. Uh, he also dropped some uh, YouTube videos when he got published. I found them very useful. Uh, he talks about his struggles and that, that he's having uh, a, a well, difficulty with the culture and also the difficulty in, in the wor working level. It's, it's a different level and very hard. But like Felipe also mentions that reading and speaking Japanese is almost a must. So there are many differences and you will have to adapt a lot and also have to adapt very fast. I hear a lot of people talking about wanting to get published in Japan, although I understand where you're coming from because it was my dream also one day. But I believe with the publishing changing, the world is getting faster and smaller because of the technology we have today. That the chances of making a manga in your own country and afterwards have it published in Japan by having it translated might be a bit higher. I can't say for sure because the future is still unclear, but if your story is really good, then it will spread all over the world. But to get back to your question, I don't believe an American can become a mangaka in Japan. I believe that anyone can become a mangaka in Japan. But it all depends on you. That's what my main messages are with how to ban. It's like most of you are waiting for an opportunity to happen. Asking if things are possible that actually you have self-control over. That's crazy. You can do anything you want. You can be anything you want. But you have to be serious about it. Make work of it, study, keep falling, but also keep getting back up and know your strength and your weakness. So anything is possible. So thanks Manikaizu for that question. On to the next question. And the next question is from Tobias Karbajal. Sorry if I butchered your name. He writes, Dear Mustayaki, do I need a college education to make manga or increase my chances of making manga for a living? I am 14 and I am already drawing on the liter paper. I am currently a freshman in high school and I am still not certain if I should go to college. The courses of art in my state don't really look like they will help in the area of manga. So the final question is, do I absolutely need college if I want to someday be published in Japan? Thank you for reading this and good luck on your iPod Boy manga. Hi Tobias, thanks for your question. I talked about it a bit on uh, the previous mailbag. I believe that you should never take the full risk. There are some people who do that and it works out fine for them and that's great. I believe it can't, uh, it can't do any harm to have a backup plan ready. I've made some good choices in life but I also made some bad choices and one of them is not continuing or sticking to education. I didn't thought it was a bad decision back then but what did I know? I was just a kid, a teenager, and that's what's so troubling. We have to make very big decisions so early in our life. How could we possibly know what we want to become when we are 15 or 16 years old? I get it. There are many people, even people who are 50, that still don't know what they want to do. So having your goal set as a mangaka is one thing. Choosing an education as a backup plan can be something totally different. However, I believe that you could benefit from choosing an education that is in the same line as a mangaka to help you out with your manga as well. It could be an art education, it could be about writing, branding building. Uh, I always wanted to be a movie director, so that really helped me out with uh, the storyboarding, getting the perspectives of a shot, uh, storytelling. But even if you follow an education that's not in the line of a mangaka, it can help you out with other things like stimulating your brain activity. Now taking courses of art outside of Japan is almost impossible to find a manga artist education. And other arts educations do not approve or stimulate the direction of manga. And that can be a good thing because if you look at the successful manga, 
that are out there right now, you will see that there are many different uh, styles. Like One Piece is different, Naruto is different, and studying other art can help you with that. So do you need college to get published in Japan? Well, not per se, but I would advise you to stick to a backup plan. Stick to school. Well, let's go to the next question. And the next question is from Bernard Henry who writes, Hey, my name is Bernard and I can write stories really well, but I can't draw at all really. Will being unable to draw completely destroy my chances of being in the manga industry? Bernard, thank you for your question. Uh, will it completely destroy your chances? No, of course not. There's, uh, well, there are many writers that can draw and just focus on writing. However, there are a couple of things you have to think about. Publishers are mostly looking for the whole package. Why? Because that saves them time and money. For publishers, when it comes to publishing manga, there are one, there's one thing that has the highest priority and that is making profit. Don't forget it's still a business. How else are they going to pay the artists, the writers, the staff, the printing, the marketing? So they are looking for selling quality products. If you happen to have a quality artwork and writing skills, well, then their eyes will light up and twinkle because that's easy money, right? They have to do less work for getting a great manga. So what about writers? There are publishers who accept just writers and match them with really great artists. I guess that's very different from publisher to publisher and I do not have the knowledge to tell you which one does or doesn't accept writers. Well, Frederick L. Jones with, uh, from Saturday AM with who I did the interview is uh, working on that. You should check out the interview if you haven't already. We talk a lot about writing and publishing manga but he also said that if you are a really talented writer and you can show some great stuff He's working on ways to hook writers up with talented artists. But I think the best thing you should do is find an artist that you want to work with or an artist that wants to work with you. Even try to build up experience with different artists. So in the end, you would have a great portfolio to show, uh, to show publishers or even more talented artists. But why stick to only writing manga? You could expand and broaden your horizon. Try writing different genres, different styles, different media. In the end, it will only help you get more experience. So thanks Bernard for your question. Up to the next question. BLF writes, Hey Musti, I have three questions for you. Number one, what's your take on black characters in manga? Also, characters of other race. They seem not to have a prominent role, if any, in manga. My series, for instance, will follow a black protagonist that will be characters of other races. I just have not seen this done much in the manga community. Number two, what software do you recommend for editing manga, uh, Photoshop, manga studio, etc. And number three, what tips can you give us for toning? Thanks in advance. Your video series is awesome. Keep up the good work. I appreciate what you are doing for aspiring manga artists. Uh, well, about your first question, I do not agree. There are some black characters uh, already. Think about Afro Samurai or in Naruto, the Eight Tails and the Raikage. They have prominent roles in the stories. But if you take a look at manga characters, they aren't exactly Japanese looking and they aren't exactly Western or European looking either. When I look at a manga character, specifically the main characters that are telling the story, what I see is uh, like a reflection of what is inside of me, inside of us, as if they portray a mirrored reflection of our inner human. And next to that, manga characters, to me, are not really comparable with actual humans. I see them as a character, a creation, but with very human aspects to them, so we can relate to them. Like a Mickey Mouse or a Thundercats and Ninja Turtles. These are animal based characters but still have a human nature. Well, that's the same way I look at manga characters. So it doesn't matter which race the character has unless it's functional for the storytelling. If the race is an essential part of the telling. About question number two, what software would I recommend? I recommend both Manga Studio and Photoshop. If you would have to make a choice out of these two for making manga, then I would say Manga Studio. Especially if you want to create it digitally, but it's also a great software for post editing. I do everything digital for, for iPod Boy, and Manga Studio works great for that. I do the drawing, the inking, toning, effect lines, uh, speech bubbles, 
uh, all in Manga Studio and only use Photoshop for adding the sound effects. It's much easier to do with uh, Photoshop to do the sound effects because you can, yeah, well, change the text a bit more easier. Now, about your question number three about tips for toning, it's a very open question, so I answer it on a mustiaki way, understanding why you use certain tones. Now, manga is all about expression. So if there's something like say a, a tra something tragically happens and you want to give it more expression, then toning could help with that. Uh, the way I learned about toning is studying a lot of other manga. Try to understand why they use toning in this panel and not in that panel. Uh, understand what is being told, what is being expressed. You know what worked for me a lot? Uh, just get a manga and get a picture where there's toning in it and ask yourself, would it have the same impact, telling or expression, if they would leave the toning out of this panel? If the answer is yes, and it would have the same impact, then it could be that it's just there for a better visual spread over the page. But in most cases, it's there to highlight something in the telling, and it's a way of pointing something out. On to the last question of this mailbox episode. Manga Dreamers writes, Hey Houtabem, it's been my dream to become a mangaka for as long as I can remember and I want to know how I can get started creating my characters for my own manga series. Did you ever have to study from real life before drawing manga? I have been studying anatomy and such but my work is not at a professional level. How can I improve on this? Should I keep drawing from life? How exactly did you go about creating I Put A Boy? Like how did you practice before making your series? Sorry for asking a lot of questions, thanks for the tips, and I can't wait for more videos. That's a good question, uh, Manga Dreamers. You have to look at the source material for your characters first, and that's the story. Most of how the character looks reflects from the characterization of the character. What kind of character is he or she? What are the backstories? Do you have tragic backstories, or do they resemble a brainless character? If they have that fighting spirit in them, then you can see that in their eyes. If they are self-centered, then you can do something with their lips hanging. This comes down to facial expressions, but also gestures. A character that's weary in life has more hanging shoulders and his back is not uplifted. So you indeed study from real life. It's almost like a study of the human psychology. What helped me building characters was that I wrote the characters down first in the story. Because uh, that's the most important part. The story is key. And then express those characterizations of, of my character. It's a bit like uh, movie editions. They, the, the script is already finished. It's written out. And now the director and the team are looking for the, uh, for the right actor that can portray the role. You sometimes see that they select very different actors for, the, for that audition. They have the same basic elements in common like blonde hair, uh, height, male, female. They can choose the actor that lies closest to the character and the characterizations that he or she must portray. Now what helped me for inspiration was searching for photos of faces that would reflect the characterizations in my story. And I would use them as a reference. That's it for this week's episode of Mailbag. Thank you all for sending in your great questions. I hope my answers are of use to you. Now remember, if you have any questions about making manga, you can send in the questions at any moment to this address, info at howtobam.com. And next week I will be picking out some new questions for next week's episode of Mailbag. That's it for now. What did you guys think of this Mailbag show? Let me know by leaving your comment in the comment section. Also, a way of letting me know that you like this Mailbag video is if you hit that like button. Be a subscriber to the channel if you haven't already. It's a great way for staying updated for the latest videos. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Just type in Mustiaki. You can also follow How to Bam on Facebook and Twitter. So if you want to stay updated for the latest insights, it's just one button click away. Thank you Bammers for watching this video. And keep in mind, it's not only the pen that's mightier than the sword, it's also you overcoming awesomeness. Gambate on your manga. Until next time, Janet.